Hey YouTube, my Patreon patrons requested a video on Stroke Machine and I'm happy to oblige them because this is a really amazing app that deserves some more attention. There's hardly any videos about this. So uh, there's 12 different percussive parts and 12 different melodic parts and all of those 24 parts have the same synthesis slash sampler sections. So you can do all kinds of, I mean, there's 24 different things that you can be possibly doing in this one app. It's a really kind of an incredible thing. Uh, I'm kind of baffled that this isn't more popular. I guess the, the interface is kind of a, a off-putting. It's supposed to be high contrast, so you can play around with this in the clubs. But uh, I, I think if you can get past that, you're going to like this. Uh, some people have described it as being like the uh, what the iElectribe app should have been. Uh, and I, I can kind of see that, because there's a lot of the same elements in the Electribe design throughout the whole series that, that made it into this. Um, I've been listening to the music in a lot of various sci-fi mu movies lately. Like, I, I, I don't know why that just suddenly became a, a real fascination for me to listen to how people thought the future was going to sound like. Uh, so I've been watching all these really old, uh, uh, you know, 90s and 80s uh, sci-fi things. Uh, and it's really amusing because it always has this, like, really, really energetic um, electric sound. And uh, I want to try to to duplicate that sort of... or come up with something that sounds like it'd be appropriate in a bar in the far fung future in a B sci-fi movie. So I'm going to start off uh, trying to show you the, the synthesis elements in the drums here. Uh, the, the There's a lot of going on here. You got all the, the usual waveforms that you can choose from. But on the sign specifically, you get some pretty interesting uh, tools to play with. I'm going to throw in a basic little pattern here so you can hear me screwing around with this. Get this to tweak around with. You can do some massive wave shaping. And then you can saturate or kind of desaturate it. Or I guess that resaturates it, doesn't it? It's saturating it in a different way. Uh, there's one really important thing that I got to show you here. If you listen to this, sometimes the um, drums have kind of a, a an extra little glitchy stuff. It's not a glitch, but it's it's a little bit more abrasive than the other hits. And the reason for that is this: this cho uh, chooses where you want to start on the waveform. So if I bring it into the center here. It should be more calm than before. It's a little hard to tell with the waveform that I've got right now, but take my word for it. When it's over here and you got the dotted line, it's uh, it's giving you uh, a random selection. Every single time the note hits, it picks a different part of the wave. And if you've got a really complex wave, you, you hear there's a definite Oh, right there. There was a definite transient that was kind of screwed up. So in order to avoid that, just move this a little bit. And now you get a solid line. That means it's always going to start right there. So that's really handy uh, for drums. You, you actually want it to be on the dotted lines for your uh, bass if you want it to sound uh, like an analog synthesizer because uh, analog synths didn't have a specific start point for their waves. They were just free running. So they, they when you hit the note, you got wherever it was. So that's really handy for the, the bass parts, but not so handy for the drum parts. Well, let me uh, actually shape this now to being a little more appropriate for uh, drums. basically going for kind of a a dirty sign that's really quiet it's hard to hear that All right, 
I'm going to build up from there. Uh, you've also got uh, Oscillator 2 FM, which you're not hearing anything because uh, that is a modulation source for this. So it's doing whatever is on Oscillator 2 becomes a frequency modulator for 1. So if I give it just a little bit, you hear that's a much more crunchy sort of sound. If I change the frequency of this, or change the waveform, it's now affecting the first one, even though you're not hearing this at all. And it's... Uh, really interesting that they've got this kind of tool in here because there's also the ring mod which if I get rid of the, the first oscillator now the ring mod even though I got oscillator 2 down here you're now hearing this right this is similar to FM but not really it's it's the same sort of multiplication thing but this is happening at a different end of the the signal chain so this is taking whatever the sound of the first oscillator is and multiplying it by the sound of the second oscillator, even though the second oscillator in this case is not actually generating its own sound there. You see, it's, it's this grungy sort of really short pulse. So, with these two tools in mind, you can bring in one at a later stage to create uh, a more dynamic sort of thing. So. Uh, I'm going to switch envelope one into uh, sustain mode here. So I've got this sustain, which I'm actually going to take down to nothing. Uh, so I've got a pure decay here, and I'm going to throw in uh, some ring mod just till I hear it. And there's a couple of ways to, to go about this, right? Like, uh, I could do this in reverse. Just barely hearing it. That's not as good as the other way around. Or if you decide that you don't like this at all, because I'm starting to decide that myself. Well, that's kind of interesting. There's also a transient um, system in here where you can add these sorts of like uh, the attack transients. Uh, so a, a thump is obviously the best choice for a, uh, a kick drum. And you gotta give it some cycles so you actually hear it. I'm not hearing it on my headphones. <laughs> it's doing it, like you can see the... Uh, there's all kinds of volume but I'm not hearing anything. These are really good headphones, too. This is kind of surprising to me. Alright, it was just way too low. Alright, I hope everybody's at home is hearing this now. So when I bring in... That first oscillator, which... Is starting to sound a little grimy. You got the thump and then a decaying sound, uh, which I'm going to uh, expand upon a little bit. Yeah, that's a little too grimy. Okay, the, the reason that it was grimy, and I, I just fixed it, was um, I was doing the FM at different notes, and whenever you do that, uh, it's going to sound uh, a little messy and grungy. Uh, if you do the same notes at different octaves though, it's going to sound fine like it, it is in this case. I could actually take this down to a C0. That's actually lowering the tone while not getting too messy. That's just a really messy wave there. Oh, you know what? I should have followed my own advice and started that off. Get a clearer start point there. Alright, 
right, that's enough screwing around with the uh, kick. Let's move on to the snare here. Uh, now usually I just immediately start playing around with the ring mod, so I see no reason not to start here doing that. Uh, I want a pulse and another pulse to start off with. And let's hear how that sounds over here. Try to get a uh, kind of an impulse y sort of sound. Hmm. I really like playing around with the sine wave thing. I got an idea. All right. I'm going to assign envelope one to screw around with this. And it's, you hear that's kind of like a chip tuny sort of uh, snare. Um, I want to try to make that sound good. Now, once again, I gotta make sure I'm starting on my waves at the right spot. And I'm gonna try a filter here. With 24 decibel, I might have too much self resonating. Yeah, it's a little too uh, rough. I've kind of lost the thread. That doesn't sound like a snare at all. You try uh, reducing the decays on these. It's a bit crusher in here. That's always good music. Now's a good time for me to show you the effects buses. Uh, in here you get to choose whatever you want to happen, and in this case I do not want a delay to happen. I would rather um, uh, stage reverb happens. Um, I'm not sure how much of that I want. And you've got to go in and actually say which bus, like this is already defaulting to one, and then give it some FX mix. I shut up for a little while, so I hope you heard that. Listen to this one. Try a slightly more funky pattern here. I'm soloing everything, kind of. Uh, to lower the uh, intensity of a uh, kick or any uh, of the drum hits, just drag your finger down. I 
I'm having a hard time with this uh, snare here. It's got an overdrive in here. I figure that's always worth a shot. When you pull this down, it like it really seems to cut off. Uh, like, uh, whoops! Uh, it seems to cut it like an EQ or like a, a shelf, a high-low thing. Um, that's not working out either. Uh, there's one other trick that's kind of fun to play with here. You can actually take a sample. Uh, and now, remember, here I've assigned the FM to affect whatever is on oscillator 1, and even if it's a sample, it's now trying to affect that. that feeling like I'm only amusing myself now so I'm just gonna remove that all together and move on no oh, nah, that sounds too weak god damn it I don't know if you guys hear that. I don't know what the hell's making that sound. I'm sorry if it keeps doing that. All right. I actually really like that now. So I've got the, the frequency modulation ha thing happening. Uh, I removed it from envelope one. Uh, so now it's, it's not doing it with the envelope, but it's still doing it. And uh, I've got the ring mod screwing around with a pulse uh, on this fat snare sample so that that sounds nice big and crunchy let's move on to our melody here and uh for this one uh, i want to do some kind of weird dub thing with a sitar sample so uh you bring in uh, one of the presets that comes with it there's all these ethnic things um instruments uh sitar uh, crank this up to c3 So that sounds like this. Actually, it's going to sound better if I just throw this into a bar here. All right. So I need to give that uh, some sustain. Uh, the second envelope controls your uh, amplitude modulation. So if you want it to sound longer, you need to use the second one. All right, that sounded pretty good. And for this one, I'm going to use a different effects bus. And I know that I'm going to be doing some crazy shit. So I'm going to throw this like immediately into the effects before I do anything else, just to make sure um, I keep the effects in mind as I'm working with them. Uh, so I'm going to be using a lot of delay. Oh yeah. And send it into the mix. And the reason I want to have lots of delay is I'm going to have this doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, to start off with, right, you've got the LFO, and you can assign that somewhere. And obviously, in any kind of dubby thing, you start throwing it at the filter. We need a much thicker filter. And uh, now, once again, you've got all the, the various FM stuff that you can play with. Um, I want to play around with this clock some more, though. 
uh, or the uh, LFO some more. Um, let's see if this works. This this is kind of crazy. I'm gonna use an envelope to change the rate of a LFO. So let me actually make this a reverse. So it's gonna it's gonna spike it down, and then it's gonna as it decays come back up to a high point. So. Too much resonance there. That's kind of amusing, but I can do better than that. Here, once again, I'm. Uh, Trying to use a, a actual oscillator to FM a sample, and in this case, so I'm going to do the thing that I was screwing up in the previous thing, where I, I had a, a, a different note being frequency modulated. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna make that uh, an F because I think that's going to be close, but not quite. So it's going to be a little grungy. That's a little too much grungy. One thing that I haven't played around with at all yet is you can actually record stuff onto this. So if you hit the record thing, oh, whoops! You got to turn on the mod sequencer. I think it doesn't even record if you don't have that on. That's just changing the rate a little bit. It, it's not that great of an effect. Let me try changing this to a, a notch. It's a little bit more common in dub. Uh, BS means uh, band stop, uh, which is usually thought of as a notch uh, filter. And here, yeah, that's really playing around inside of that delay because uh, it's, it's making this tight notch inside of the frequency spectrum as it's wobbling back and forth with the LFO and the resonance is, is like making that really pronounced uh, so it's, it's shimmering all over the place. Let's hear how that sounds with everything else. One more thing, right? I'm going to... I gotta play around with this pan. So now with the pan bouncing around with the uh, the filter, you always get the same frequencies in the, the same locations, right? It's tied to the same LFO suite. So that's, that's kind of a neat trick. I really like playing around with that pan. I don't know if this is going to get picked up in any sort of major sci-fi movie, but it's definitely B sci-fi movie quality. So I feel like I've reached my goal here. Uh, thank you very much to my Patreon patrons for suggesting this and for sponsoring me. Uh, please consider also sponsoring me on Patreon if uh, you would like to be able to participate in selecting apps for these Let's Plays. Take it easy, guys. But I now throw in a four on the floor pattern, which is uh, very typical. Uh, first, let me throw in some accents so that you're actually gonna hear this. You hear how the, the bass is cutting out right there so the kick can punch through. And uh, that's like exactly where I start almost everything. Uh, you can play around with it from there and a multitude of ways. And uh, 
a great thing that you can do with all these uh, kinds of programs is uh, set mute groups. Uh, so if I go back into the, the program settings for this and enter the parameters, these are my hats. If I set them to a mute group, when one of these triggers, it's going to cause the other one to silence so they won't overlap. Uh, so that it's like a real high hat scenario where you can't have an open hat and a closed hat sound because the, that's a physical uh, drum thing that just can't happen. 